Still no resolution in sight just yet for problems surrounding retrenchment of workers at the National Conservation Commission. But news is there will be a meeting on Wednesday at the Labor Department between management and the unions aimed at settling the impasse. Tensions were high again this morning as scores of workers gathered at the NCC headquarters at Codrington Hill St. Michael with the union demanding that management withdraw termination letters sent to workers. Officials from the National Union of Public Workers and the Barbados Workers Union were locked in a meeting from just after 8 this morning for over two hours. Afterwards, NUPW Senior Industrial Relations Officer Wayne Walren gave the media an update on the situation. I think what they agreed to, I think last week, it was a case of you were uncertain whether you will get both parties involved so that you can have conciliation to your both sides. But now it seems as though there's a commitment now to have it conciliated so both parties would have to commit to the process of agreeing to making yourself available at the Labor Department so that you can hear both sides of the story and conciliate, hopefully to have a, a resolution to have the process corrected. So this is where we're at right now. Government is in the process of fine-tuning funding options for UE students. According to Finance Minister Chris Sinclair, the Student Revolving Loan Fund will be replenished and the Ministry of Education will make special provisions for students who are unable to access the fund. For those who can go to the Student Revolving Loan Fund, the fund is being uh, replenished so that they can go there and the conditions are going to be slightly changed from what they were and the minister will announce this in due course. I know they're working on it right now. They finalized it and they will announce it in due course to accommodate those, uh, those students. Mr. Sinclair has again defended government's tuition fee policy, noting that government is still committed to Errol Barrow's policy of free education. And I, I've heard this comment that free education in Barbados has come to an end. And that is not true. 80% or more of the cost of university education is paid by the government. Still, all of the economic costs is paid by the government, so to speak. So, so, therefore, so therefore, it is not true to say that. You don't pay to go to Kennedy College, you don't pay to go to Samuel Jack and Prescott Polytechnic, you don't go to pay to go to secondary school, and you don't pay to go to primary school. So this thing that free education is ended in Barbados and that Barrow's gene have been destroyed is just utter rubbish. Since government's removal of a fuel concession for public service vehicle operators at the end of March, some operators have been facing fuel bills of more than $1,400 a week for ZR vans and $2,100 a week for minibuses. This is according to Secretary of the Association of Public Transport Operators, or APTO, Cecil Ford. He made the revelation during an emergency meeting of the association at the Barbados Workers Union's Solidarity House headquarters, where he also said that APTO has been given a proposal by Rubis to help ease the fuel costs for members. He said APTO has written to Prime Minister Fendel Stewart to give it some consideration. They have the technology where if government was able to give us a concessionary rate and government may be concerned that the concession may not be given only to PSVs or the intended uh, consumer. Ruby says to us that they will be able to attach a device to each vehicle and to a particular station pump, where unless your vehicle is equipped with that device, you will not be able to get your fuel at the concessionary rate. Mr. Ford said the technology is extremely secure and he sees it as an alternative that can work. Rubis also tells us that with this device, you will be able to have your tanks filled. They will be able to give us information as to the time you have your vehicle filled, how much fuel you purchase, and the time you purchase your fuel, and how long it takes to fill that tank or how long it takes for you to transact that operation. The rich history and heritage of the 229-year-old Aline School must be made more accessible to students. This is according to Principal Julia Beckles, who has been reflecting on the school's history, including being the first to establish co-education in 1947. She made the remarks at the school's annual Founders Day service after receiving a check from the Alumni Association's Public Relations Officer, Kathy Harper Hall. In the very near future, ladies and gentlemen, students, I see a plaque 
or a very beautiful mural on one of our external walls, celebrating the fact that the Ali School was the first school to become co-educational in Barbados. Thank you. I see the Ali School Hall as a walk of fame in which the photos of Alinians who have made significant contribution to Barbados are displayed. Ms. Beckles said the school is also committed to honoring past principles and highlighting all of its achievements. I believe that when we make this history more accessible to our students, it will build that school pride that has eluded some of them. It will cause them to recognize that they have come from a, from a proud and long tradition. I give you the assurance that the school will undertake in the future to ensure that these things become a reality. Executive Director of the Small Business Association, Lynette Holder, is concerned about the research that shows that many businesses formed during recessionary conditions fail. She's therefore urging caution about constant calls for Barbadians to become entrepreneurs during these times. She made the remarks at a panel discussion, which was held recently at the Ellerslie Secondary School. Ms. Holder believes, however, that efforts must continue to encourage Barbadians to develop an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, Drucker said that business has two functions, marketing and innovation. Marketing and innovation. And let me can maybe just focus on the latter part for a little bit. I think what we ought to take from this recession is the need at this time for us to really use that human resource development strategy and all the other policy initiatives to try to create an entrepreneurial society. Ms. Holder is also advising Barbadians to strive to be more innovative. That doesn't necessarily mean starting a business, but it may mean bringing together persons in the form of a think tank that can look at how can we, how can we take a struggling manufacturing sector, for example, and re-engineer that sector what do we need relative to capital, skills, etc., plant, markets, to re-engineer that manufacturing sector that we can reposition it and put it on a growth path? Four more men, all from St. Lucie, have been charged in connection with the murder of Charlie Doom, who was shot while at a bar at the corner of Nelson and Wellington Street in the city late last month. They are Xavier Ronaldo Walks, 25 years of Archers Road, Crab Hill, Shane Akeem Omar Bab, 22 years of Friars Well, along with 33-year-old Ryan Omar Samuel and 26-year-old Rory St. Clair Thomas, who are both from Grape Hall. They will appear in the District A Magistrates Court today to answer the charge. Now on Saturday, Andre Omar Jackman, alias Lord Evil or Punchies, 35 years of Stroud Bay, Crab Hill, was also charged for murder in relation to this death. 